Paul we, Ferris. Wee man. The wee man. Yeah, so I, I, nicknames and all that. I did, even films, see films about the great train robbery and all yeah. that. I don't watch that. I, I don't like uh, glorifying crime at all, right? Have you seen Wee Man's Especially, movie? No, I haven't. But I've, I'm going to tell you a story from it because apparently the Sun said last week, I told them this wee story that I'm going to tell yeah. you, and they said, oh, it's in Paul's memoir, Paul Ferris's yeah. memoir. So he's told, and apparently it's in the film, a version of it, but films are always. So it's dead straightforward. I, I was a young detective in Rossi now. I had done a few months in Campbelltown when I got moved to the island of Rossi, uh, of Butte, uh, the town of Rossi on the island of Butte. So I'm the only detective on the island, and I got a phone call one day from uh, the chief super or super at the Swedish Crime Squad um, and said, OK, son, can you do us a favour? We're looking for this car. It was a Daimler, uh, and here's the address. I don't want you to do anything. Just see if the car's there and see if any lights come on when it gets dark in half, and it gets dark very early in Scotland, you know, but now... <laughs> <laughs> So I did that. I had a need to, a more need to the CID by now. And we went down. The car was there. I didn't know what it was about at this point. And the light came on. It was obviously occupied. It was a flat, top flat again. Oh, was it oh, top, top, top flat? Oh, top flat, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I went back and phoned Pitt Street and the police headquarters and told the, the chief super. And he said, right, there's a, a ferry coming in at six o'clock, half past six. There's going to be four serious crime squad officers on it. I want you to meet them. They'll have this car take them to the police station, they'll have firearms, check the firearms, get the boss to meet them, and then show them some digs for the night, and then they're going to, and I need you to get a warrant for that address, right? So by the time they came over, I had done all that, had the warrant, had them in a hotel, um, and the warrant was for this house, and then I found out that it was Paul, that was Paul Ferris that was in the flat. Ah. And yeah. I just want to say something for the viewers who are not familiar with Paul, who he was at that moment in time. He was a... Uh, he was a uh, gangster. <laughs> he was feared mainly among his own because he was a pretty ruthless guy, allegedly. Um, he was part of the, the criminal world in Glasgow and there was other families involved and a history involved that had gone in the Glasgow schemes that had gone on for a number of years, power struggles within uh, the, for control of drugs markets and whatnot, and that, and and Paul had been an enforcer for one of those families. That's how he had started off, because he was ruthless. He was there's no question of that. He had, and and you maybe understand that better when I've told you the story that he had this um, calmness about him that uh, that I never saw uh, anything other than. So the story is that they come over, they've got their guns, and off we go. And I don't get a gun. I'm, an, I'm a firearms officer at this point, but my boss on the island said, no gun for you, because he knew the serious crime squad, right? You just stay in the background and do exactly what you're told, but don't get involved in anything if you can help it, okay? I'm only a young boy. So off we go. There's a, there's a couple of de detective sergeants, two or three detective sergeants in the DC, all tooled up. We go to the flat, one in hand. When they go to the door, I'm, I'm peeking. That's a good Scottish word. I'm peeking. Peeking would be your word for it, round the, the stairwell. Yeah. Out the road. Because I've got no gun. <laughs> <laughs> and they chart the door. Paul comes to, Paul Ferris comes to the door and he's got a night gown, a, a dressing gown on. I could really wind him up here and say he had a goonie on. <laughs> a goonie? With his underwear. Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't. He had, a, he had a dressing gown on. And they opened the door and grabbed him and put him down. And he's on the ground and they've all got their guns out, as far as I remember, all pointing at his head. And they, all I remember is seeing the guns doing this. Because in Scotland, in the UK, we don't use guns that often. It's very seldom that you actually draw a gun on someone, and never at that kind of range. Yeah. yeah. Unless you want a confession from them or something. No, that's a joke. So they're all... That wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's had a gun in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I do know a detective in Glasgow who had a great clearance rate, and that's how he was doing it, but that's another story entirely. Um, so you, so you see them shaking because they're not used to doing this. Yeah, and the and fingers it's Paul are on Ferris. the trigger. It's Paul Ferris. And the fingers are on the trigger. Well, like. I, I would assume so. Yeah. <gasps> and he's <laughs> Ferris is on his back, looking at them, pinned to the ground with his guns. Freeze, freeze, please, please, please. We're all in suits, remember? Yeah. And all I remember is seeing Paul 
looking at the, the guns and saying, is that a snub nose? The eight, Smith and Wesson. <laughs> and he was as calm as I am now, calmer. And they're going, shut up, shut up. Ah, you're under arrest, you're being detained. Ah. <laughs> All right, okay, calm down. <laughs> Not a nerve in his body. <laughs> I've cool never cucumber. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, Paul Ferris. I've met him a few times in circumstances like that and seen him at court and stuff. But cool. And, and the story, I've investigated crimes that he's been allegedly there or thereabouts. And it's always the same as this uh, deadpan it's only a wee guy and in those days the wee man was one thing that's what the film was called Yeah. but most cops that I knew that had ever dealt with Paul Ferris said that Babyface was another name that they had for him in those days because he looked like a wee boy you loved the film there was, right? yeah the movie there excellent. was nothing big about, you know he wasn't a big you know he wasn't threatening or intimidating yeah. physically the guy who was actually looked in his eyes <laughs> <laughs> the guy he was actually enforcing for in the movie he um, ends up later on in the movie killing his son. Okay, it's a good plug for the movie. <laughs> I mean, that whole world, we're not really in that mode to go down that underworld. And that, the ice cream wars and all that stuff that was all going on at that time. Organised. See, Well, that was just all too, too much for a Conetto, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to burst into song again, isn't he? Any excuse? It's my Conetto. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, so we, like, like I was saying, we'd love to have Paul on and yeah. check out his audio book and his and his book in general. It's available worldwide, and I'll put the link below the description box. It's available worldwide on Amazon. The punchline to that story, not yeah. the punchline. Paul was was charged. He was found with an amount of cocaine. Possession of coke. Allegedly. And he got not proven at court. Brilliant. That night. And the punchline to that is I get asked all the time, because I was there, I get asked to search his car. No, yeah. I get told to search his car. I've never searched anything as well as I searched Paul Ferris's car that night, because I was sure I was bound to f I was supposed to find something. And it went to court. I wasn't cited because I had no part to play in it. The four senior detectives, serious crime squad detectives, gave their evidence and the jury saw fit to find Paul not guilty based on the evidence. How did they fuck up then? They must have fucked up somehow. Well, that's exactly what happened because most people say to me, oh, they tried to fit him up, didn't they? No, they somehow they fucked up. And my they? point is that if they'd been going to fit him up, who do you think would have found the drugs? Exactly. Yeah. They'd have put the drugs where I would find them and I'd have gone to court all day long. And the jury might have believed me because I was only a young detective. They put it down as an illegal search or something. Yeah. They fucked up because they got drunk that night afterwards. There was carry on in the beach and the guns were carried yeah. and all sorts of things going on. It was the usual serious drinking squad. See if you, <laughs> I'm serious. See if you take a Glasgow, anyone in Glasgow out with Glasgow, they think they're on frigging holiday. <laughs> <laughs> they do. See the minute the bus leaves the Glasgow boundary, all you hear up the back is tch, tch, Yeah, tch, yeah. As the cans of tenants lager are getting opened. It's like me being down here, I'm on holiday. <laughs> So I think the four of them came over. That hotel that night was a riot. And I don't think they did their job properly. I think they were unprofessional. That's exactly, they fucked up. That's yeah, exactly what I mean, happened. that is like... That's Scottish story. That is still alive, are you? I'd love to hear all of his stories from his own mouth and see what he says the truth is. Yeah. And we don't give police like, information away, like addresses, by the way, so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't be asking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going from one Paul to another McCartney. Oh, and we're going back in time. Yeah. Young detective, Campbelltown. Paul living on the farm in the Mull of Kintyre with his uh, good lady, Linda, and the kids. And everyone knew he was there. He was there every summer. And my excuse was, right, I'm 20, 23, about 23 just trying to be a detective, trying to aspire to a young detective. And I'm on my own. And Lennon, uh, John Lennon had been shot probably six months before or something like that in New York. So my excuse, and that's all it is, guys, nothing better than that is an excuse of a young guy to go and try and meet Paul McCartney. Why right? not? But I've got a warrant card that says I'm a policeman, so... Fuck it, we're in. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove the old Cartina, right? The old Mark III Cartina up the, the road to his farm. And I nearly took the sump out of it that day. It was some road. And then there's guys with shotguns. 
Yes, can I help you? CID, it's private land, nobody's allowed on, but I managed to blag my way in. Right? <laughs> yeah. What did so you say? I've got to see Paul. A security matter, top security, it was. I wanted to make sure, oh, what I missed was that there was a, a show on the next day. It's called the July Show. And it's always held in August. <laughs> Don't ask me why. It's gone to show you. I should have said that. It's held in a place called Peterson Park. It's like Helen Games that are on, yeah. vets that are on all over the country. And this is a big farmer's show kind of thing. When there's a horsey bit where people ride their horses and their kids, there's caber throwing and there's tents, beer tents, lots of beer and tents, and guys going about selling sheep and coos and all that. Right, it's a farm show and it's a big deal. And they always go to it, or they always used to go to it, the McCartneys, because they love the horses. Yeah, like oh. a traveller's market. It wasn't a market, it was a show, they sure. call it a show, maybe um, there must have been cattle and things on yeah. display as well. So It's terrible that I can't think exactly what, how to describe it, but a fet is how it was described in the sun. But they go, and that's why I'm there to see them, to see what their movements are the next day. Because yeah. remember, John Lennon had been shot. So I'm a thorough detective. I want to know what their movements are going to be so that I can make sure the police arrangements are... Nobody gave a shit, the truth be told. So I eventually get to the farmhouse. Even the farm manager, Mr Cairns, Bobby Cairns, told me, what are you going up there for? You know, he's not interested. Just I said, I'm going to tell you. It's about tomorrow. Can't discuss it. Need to kill you. And off I go. So I get to the farmhouse, get out of the CID car, and Linda McCartney comes out. And she's got a face like thunder, right? Mm. You guys won't remember the rep that they had back in the day, she had back in the day, the press, the media, everybody hated her. Of course she was with Paul McCartney. It was kind she of was she made to fucking horrible. <laughs> 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 Maybe that was why the veggie burgers. They were fucking what, disgusting. We had a time actually, wasn't she? I don't mind them. <laughs>